assets uh, to it. Um, let me start with the basics. Uh, yes, I think it's a good idea to have an extension of the existing free trade agreement with India. Uh, now bringing in services. It was delayed far too long by the Rajapaksa government. Uh, the political will is now there on both sides. There's the Modi over there, Prime Minister in particular over here. Um, uh, so in principle, yes, I'm, I'm all in favor of it. Uh, we need much better economic links across the four trades. Um, <clears throat> that's obvious given the job. We need particularly good links with South India. We need to hook into South Indian value chains as part of going global. It's difficult to see how we can really go global without doing some of it, at least, through those South Indian business chains and linking up with South Indian business houses. Um, uh, we need much better bilateral links with the four states of South India, in addition to the ICTA uh, negotiations. That's what I would say in principle, but now come the caveats. Um, the Indians tend to do very partial free trade agreements. They don't make that much difference because they have significant levels of protection themselves. And the big Sri Lankan right or Sri Lankan export is all these non-tariff barriers in India that are not adequately dealt with by the existing FTA. Uh, and then there are defensive concerns on the Sri Lanka side. So, Whatever level of ambition there was at the beginning of these negotiations has been watered down uh, to the effect that whenever this negotiation is completed, most likely it's not going to amount to that much. We're not going to see that many new markets open, new competition, uh, and the forging of much deeper integration, as you put it, between Sri Lanka and India. So I would like to see a much more ambitious, not a less ambitious, FTA on goods and services and investment, indeed in other areas. But that's not going to happen because of politics on both sides and particularly politics here. This is symptomatic of how this government has got some things wrong. Uh, the negotiations weren't prepared here. Uh, and certainly the communication with the Sri Lankan public was not done, which of course left the space open to scam operating and all sorts of stories that are basically lies. Um, and the government's inevitable response to that has been on the back foot to say, no, 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 we're, we're actually only going to allow this much, this much, and this much, not that much, and that much. Uh, the reality is we need Indian professionals in Sri Lanka. We need professionals and foreign talent from all over the world uh, to partly to overcome the mediocrity of those who command our commanding heights in business in Sri Lanka. We need more competition uh, and better practice among the first year Indian business houses. Starting with South Indian business houses like the Muruga, Muruga in Chennai is precisely what Sri Lanka needs. And that should be a platform for the better Sri Lankan companies to go global. We need much better economic as well as political relations with India, particularly with South India. And having a free trade, a second installment of the free trade agreement would be a good thing. But the one we might end up with is not going to make much difference. The government's trade policy is three free negotiations for so called free trade agreements it's with India, with China, and Singapore. None of them are going to make a serious difference to the Sri Lankan economy and the way it operates. It requires a much more fundamental reform back at home. You asked about Singapore. Um, uh, y yes, part of Singapore's spectacular success is the opening up of the island to not just workers who do the sweaty work that locals, once they get to a certain level of income, don't want to do, but also to foreign talent at the top as well as in the middle. Um, uh, and it's foreigners who basically do what innovation takes place in, in Singapore. Foreigners are 40% of the population. Uh, this is the other extreme here in Sri Lanka. It's part of that broader parochial attitude and the defense of 
vested interests that I talked about earlier. 